So for those of you, let's see, who's on this? Who's on this call? Uh, is this call Heidi, Ryan, Melissa, Jenny Roach, Heather Stillborn, so I met most of you. For those that don't know me, I am uh, Mike Boyd. I'm the productivity coach here in Everfly. I mean, Roger, yeah, this is weird. I'm going to have trouble with this. I, I'm going to get there, I promise. Yeah, great. <laughs> Wonderful. Um, I'm the productivity coach here in Rocky River. Um, I've been with Keller Williams for eight years and one month in this office. Uh, started out as an individual agent, uh, did that for several years, became the productivity coach about three and a half years ago, give or take, and um, pretty much spent my, all my days either recruiting or helping new agents succeed in real estate. So that's me. So we're gonna talk about you know, when we talk about Ignite, you guys have been through this now. I know we're a little late in the module. So we talk about growing a business and running a business. Um, today is going to put that all together. We're going to get back to basics and just say what we do. So this is all great. Everything that we're learning here, let's see, Rachel wants back in. Um, everything that we're learning here in Ignite is great. But sometimes you have to frame them. We make it too complicated. Uh, we have a couple people in the room here who are going to get picked on the whole time. <laughs> so uh, Jen is here and we talked about you have to go do the activities to learn how to do this. So this is great. All of the stuff that we're doing here is an overview, but until you actually go do the activities, it doesn't matter. It's not going to sink in. Just like software, you know, you can go take a class for a new program and you can do that every day, but until you actually start learning it and using it and clicking around in there, um, that's not gonna, you're just not gonna retain the information. So, and we have this dilemma, the chicken or the egg. I don't know anything, so I can't go on that appointment. I can't make calls because I don't know enough yet. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna learn everything and then I'll go make appointments. Well, there's that point in the middle where it's really uncomfortable. Can you do me a favor? Can you move over there? Do you mind? Um, it just helps me to not stare at one spot all the time. You can stare at Jim. <laughs> um, and so that's where we're at. Right, so we're going to strip this down though and just say, here are the activities. I need everybody in here to let go of the fact that you don't know enough. Because remember, everybody that we're going to work with mostly in the beginning of our real estate career is going to be someone that we know, like, and trust. They know you're new. They're willing to take the chance on you because they know, like, and trust you. They know your work ethic. They know that you're sharp. They know that you can do whatever you set your mind to. So, what successful agents do every day? Today, we are bringing it all together, examining how a successful agent structures their day. We'll be using what we've learned and practiced so far about growing and running our business. So, people in the room here, who's in a running their business phase of their career right now? Nobody. We are in the growing our business phase. So what does that entail? Let's see. What does it entail? <laughs> What'd you say? Crying? <laughs> okay. So we're gonna be focusing on the grow our business phase of things. So what's first one? Lead generate for buyers and sellers. People in my coaching program, who's on here? Heidi. And then we've got two here. That's about it from ours. How many times have you heard me say, pick up the phone and lead generate? Uh -huh. Every moment. Lead generate. Gary Keller tells us we're in two businesses. The first one is lead generation. 
And if we do that well enough, the second one is real estate. You don't get to do the job of the second of real estate unless you do the first one. We make seller listing presentations and get listings. Well, how do we get to those listing presentations? Refer to rule number one. We make buyer presentations and get listings. Well, how do we get those? Refer to rule number one. We preview real estate. That's the easy one. And I know, listen, I was a new agent not that long ago. I know that we're always going to revert to that which is most comfortable for us. When I was brand new, I was an AV guy. Anytime there was an AV problem, I could just go be the expert and like mess with technical issues. Brian, what do you revert to? What's that? We like the previewing. Why do you like previewing? How many people do you have to talk to? <laughs> if that, if that, what about you? You're so new. You just revert to the penal position right now. <laughs> Right? So, but we all do this. What I, what I want to take everyone to take away from in here is that these themes are universal. This is all what we go through when this, when we're new agents. Carol's on here. Carol's been around a long time. You can talk to any agent in this company. Now, some are naturals that come in and they can just talk to everybody. But we're all going through this. We're all new. And everybody that succeeds in this business has felt uncomfortable but done it anyway. Everybody had to do their first deal. Now, as you go through setting these habits up, there is no secret to this. This is very simple stuff. Everyone that succeeds in here, I know Carol has those. We look at the Ryan Youngs, the Matt Chases that you've heard from, the Jermaine Brooks that you're gutting here. I think you haven't heard from him yet. Right? These people that have hugely success, the Eddie Gold, it's pick, pick. These systems, the big names in our company, all started here, treating it like a business, treating it like a job. I always ask everyone, you start your own business, we'll just say it's up here, and then you are your own first employee. With the amount of work and effort that you're putting into real estate right now, would you fire yourself? If you were doing the work you do now, for another employer, would they fire you? Well, if you don't do these things, if you don't put these habits into place, you're going to fire yourself from the business. Three, it'll be five. So the idea here though is, and, and it's no secret, you know, I can see people that are on here that I know, and the people that have succeeded, the Mike Arcos, the, the newer agents, that are getting ready to hire their first assistant. Maggie, I was just on the phone this morning with Maggie Hubert. Capped her in her first year. She's up right now. She's on the way to go to an appointment. Then she's going to go take the picks for her listing and then she's going to lead generate. That's what she's going to do. She's going to be out there in front of people every day. There's no secret. There's no secret formula to this. There's no magic bullet. Just do the work, follow the models. Use your scripts, lead generate for buyers and sellers, which we are going to do today. We don't get off easy in this one. So after this, we're going to, let's see, one hour session. So people do not decide their futures, they decide their habits, and their habits decide their futures. So what does this tell us that we need to do? When you're hearing that and thinking of the activities that you have right now, what's this telling you about where you're at personally with your business? Yes. So thank you guys for participating. It makes it easier that I'm not just talking out into to the ether. <laughs> Julie has done it. Tell them they can put it in the channel later. 
Yeah, you can also put it in the chat and Julia says she'll read them and let us know what we're getting here. Um, for, uh, for you guys. And I really would love participation from you guys as well. It really makes it easier for me, so I appreciate it. So what do you think successful agents do every day? We'll just say the day starts at 8 o'clock in the morning. Well, let's look. How many people take the time in the morning to collect for themselves? Carol says her day starts at five. <laughs> That's why Carol is badass yeah. and does about $11 billion a year in business. I don't know her numbers, but there's a lot. They're big. So, how many people, though, take the time in the morning to collect themselves, get their frame? I do it the evening before, too. Um, people are going to joke about me every time I've said that I am uh, teaching the day of the light. People go, so what? Wake up at noon, you know, shake your hangover off, eat a cheeseburger, take a nap. <laughs> Believe it or not, I do these things as well. I like to frame the evening before. I like to look at my calendar for the next day. My head in the right place, know what I'm gonna. So when I wake up, I've already kind of prepared myself. That this is what the day's gonna look like. But you have to do those. I, you know, you'll see on these with Keller Williams, people say they pray, people say they meditate, they do yoga. I like to just sit and drink my coffee quiet. I like to just sit for a few minutes, get my head right, get ready for what's going to happen. Eight thirty to eleven thirty, lead generation will follow up. I'll be honest with you, mine pushes back about an hour. Lead generation will follow up. Now, what's easier? What we're always going to do here is we're going to gravitate to that which is most comfortable. So what do you think is the more difficult, calling somebody new or calling someone that you've already talked to? Easier. Well, let's just follow up with everybody. No, you have to lead, generate, or do. We eat. Then we run our business activities, marketing listings, reading, negotiating contracts, attending trainings. We grow the business, previewing real estate, making some of the presentation to meet with clients. For our newer agents that are on here, you'll notice that, you know, the office is usually a ghost town about 2, 2.30. People are out. They're out showing houses, going on listings. They're doing all the things that we need to do. Oh, 4.35 and 30. Review calendar for tomorrow makes this family time. Yeah, I don't have that. You can put whatever you want in there other than family time. It's the, um, we'll call my liquid meditation time. <laughs> <laughs> so the daily success habits are the foundation for growing your business. Now we're going to look at how successful agents incorporate the daily success habits into each day. Did everyone, did any, did you guys go over the 411 last week? Did you do that? We can skip that for now. What we want to talk about though is that you have to do goal setting. So I like the GPS. I don't, I haven't used the 411 in years. I haven't seen both priorities and strategies, right? So we know where we're heading. What's our main goal? What are the priorities that facilitate that goal? And each one has strategies. So you have to treat this like a business. You are not a person that just sells houses. You are a business. Treat it as such. If your hours are in Mike Boyd's land and they're from noon to two and that's the only two hours you're working all day, treat it that way. I treat it like it, but I'm just kidding. Don't do new to two. Yeah, I used to tell everyone that the lights don't come on at Boyd Industries till 10 a.m. Then we have lunch. <laughs> now, we're going to commit to the 80 20 principle as we're doing this. Who knows the Pareto principle? Anybody online? We're going to hit the online people. Sum it up. Anyone going to? Crickets. 
I hate Zoom. Hate it. Uh, Fredo principle. 20% of your activities are going to lead to 80% of your results, or you can flip that. So we talk about this, especially in my coaching. We got to move the big rocks first. Has anyone ever seen the, and I want a yes or a no from everybody on Zoom too. Has anyone seen the, uh, or heard or read the glass jar? If you fill it with sand first, has anyone heard that with a college professor? Right, so basically it was golf balls, sand and gravel. We got a yes. Who said no. All right. Thank you. Uh, what happens if you put all the sand in there first and the gravel? Well, you can't get your big rocks in. But if you put the big rocks in first, then put the sand and it fills in around it, you're going to fit everything you need into that. Gap. So those 20%, there's a difference between being busy and being productive. And so by setting these schedules, by setting these habits and these activities, that's how we go from busy to productive. And you're going to learn what those 80% are. So a lot of the things that we all want to gear ourselves to or, or we want to do instead of number one on the list, which is what? Lead generation will be so enthusiastic. <laughs> Lead generation. <laughs> uh, Everything we want to do, and again, this isn't this is everybody I've ever talked to in life, not just real estate. We're going to go to what makes us the most comfortable. Busy versus productive. That eighty percent is the easy part, but it's also a waste of time. Right? Do we want to talk to a bunch of leads? Do we want to talk to our eighty percent that we're in? That we have our pipeline. We have eighty percent of them that we know because this rule is in nature and it works. Do we want to talk to those people that don't really want to do anything, or do we want to talk to the 20% that do? Well, same thing with our activities. We need to follow the 80-20. And by setting these uh, guidelines for your day, that's going to allow you to do that. So, and I can't see what this says. So set your objectives. This stuff is gonna change your personal life too, I promise you. It's changed mine. I remember like once I really got into the Kelly Williams systems and started buying it, my mom asked my brother, like, what's wrong with Mike? And she said, he's smiling all the time. I don't know what's wrong with him. It's gonna change things. It's gonna change your relationships with your family. It's going to change all of it. It's just everything is going to change. But when we set our objectives, we were talking last night. It's pretty good. You nailed a bunch of them. So what is it you want to do? Share it. Yeah. Ten transactions by the end of summer in order to purchase a Best Buy. Timely, identifiable, metric-driven, attainable, and purposeful. So you set a goal, and I'm picking on Jen here just for everyone in the room. She's been doing this for about two and a half weeks at a high level. You've been here, just getting you, you were getting orientated, and you know all of that stuff. That is a goal. That's a really good goal. It's attainable. It's too wide area. You know, that's a fantastic goal to get you moving. That's just where we start, right? Got your G. So what are the priorities in order to do that? How do I get to that? What are the priorities? And then what are each strategy that I'm going to do to get there? So setting that goal is hugely important. Very good job. I want to ride it. <laughs> now, the next thing we're going to talk about is something that absolutely changed my life. It's a life changer when you actually do it. I'd say it took me a couple of bowls to really engage it. But my calendar is blocked out to the point of dinner with mom. Dinner with mom and, you know, on the weekend, if it's in there, if it's not in your calendar, it doesn't exist. So we'll just show you my loose calendar right now. Now I have a little bit of a different method here, but.
Boy, that's a pretty full Wednesday, huh? Let's see, how do I share this? Stop share, and then we're gonna share this one. Now, these are every appointment that I have on the books right now for the week. This goes to my phone, this goes everywhere. So when I make a hair appointment, it goes in the calendar. When I make a, any appointment, we have buyer intakes, we have uh, career consultations for recruiting, we've got coaching in here, we're, we're in Ignite right now, right? That was blocked into the calendar six months ago, whenever we scheduled this thing. The idea here though, is that you have to live by that calendar. Now, these black squares are for my lead gen, which is very different than your lead gen. Mine is for growing my profit share tree. Right, but those are written in stone. Okay, wait, are we sharing? No, that's not the one I want to share. Hold on. Stop sharing. PowerPoint. Screen. Okay. Who time blocks? Of course he does because he's a very successful. So you have to have to do this. This is a non-negotiable thing. We generate a time block. Must, must do it. And I know this all sounds simple. We thought, you know, we're going to ignite. We're like, well, I want to learn how to do short sales and how to do deals and how to have the conversations. No, this is the most important thing you can be doing right now. Time block, stick to it. Make that schedule. Set a goal. Very nice to know. We're still working on yours. But it's okay. You know, like, get into activity. The work process will show itself. Time block it, time block it, time block it. Now, if you notice on mine, you don't have to fill the thing from front to back to top to bottom. I leave white space. So my lead generation ones, those are there. Those are non-negotiable. That is time that is set up for lead gen. But also those people set appointments for me. So some days are all the way full and some days they're pretty empty. But those days, those things are set. If I erase it, then I replace it. Got to go somewhere else. So I know that I'm spending 15 to 20 hours a week on building my profit share probably more like 12 to 15 and 20 with admin. But I also leave white space. I have projects that I'm working on. Those are my time, those are my white space. If something comes up, which they have, it always does, welcome to real estate. Um, those spaces are available. Leave white space, leave time for you. But you should be scheduling in there even before you plan it your vacation time, your time with your family, the things that you're going to do to keep you mentally charged and ready to go do this business, those should be in there as well. Dinner with mom, all of them. You erase it, you gotta replace it. Stick to it, stick to it, stick with it. We got another, who's this, Deja. Now, setting a goal. I know, like I said, this is, this all sounds like, um, I don't know, romper room, kindergarten. Yeah, yeah, I know, set a goal. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. Set a goal. Create priorities around it, time block to it. So in his book, the one thing Gary cites, Dr. Gail Matthews, who found that individuals who wrote down their goals are 39.5% more likely to succeed. Who in here has written down their goals? You did last night. Anybody in the peanut gallery have written goals? No. Don't worry, I'll wait. <laughs> 
Come on, Ryan. Ryan, you have any goals? Heidi says she does. I believe it. Heidi is also succeeding at a very high level. Individuals, so 39.5% if you write them down. Individuals who wrote down their goals and shared progress reports with a friend or a productivity coach or a colleague was 76.7% .7 more likely to succeed. So we're gonna look at accountability. Be accountable. Ooh, this is uncomfortable. You're gonna actually have to do it. You can't just talk about it all day long. Who remembers what the one thing that we have to do is? Lead Jerry to be accountable to those goals. It's an attitude and an approach. So we set goals, we do the key activities, which are big rocks, are 20%. We measure the results. Okay, so end of summer, I need 10 transactions. Where am I right now? How many have I done? We talk about how many contacts that we make in our beginning coaching program here. Well, how many contacts? What's working? What isn't? Measuring this. Remember, you are not a person that just sells real estate. You are a business. Start acting like one. Set your hours of business. Set your time with your family. Be accountable to your goals. I love it. Our leadership group here with Scott and Mike and Julia and Carrie, all those that we love here, we sit down every year at the beginning of the year and we set our GPS for the company. How do we support our agents? How do we grow our company? How do we provide the best education? And we measure those and we look at those once a month. What is it, the first Friday of every month or something like that? We meet, we get together and say, where are we? How can we be better? We're evaluating the process. What worked? What didn't? Whether it be a strategy, usually it's, we're tweaking the strategies, not the priorities. We've set them for the year. We make adjustments though, throughout the whole year. Do you think Apple computer has a static accountability and goal setting? No, it changes by the minute. So you have to create a plan for accountability. So share your goals, plan your check-ins. Those of you that are first year and in productivity coaching, it's a great opportunity. I'll be honest with you, most people don't. As much as I'm here to do it, most people do not check in with accountability here. They say their numbers, but they're, some days they're one contact, some days they're 50. There's no real rhyme or reason to how we're doing it. And for those new people in here and, and the, the, the vet, veterans that are on here, we know that the failure rate in this business is pretty high. And I can tell you it's from, it's strictly from people that are unwilling or unable to do the activities. How long are we supposed to lead you on this, an hour? You know, we're going to On this call. Yeah, like how is this set up? Do I have an hour to get through this? Yeah, call? you go through until about 9.45, 10 o'clock, and then we, it's 9.35 right now. Okay. So you go about 10, you go like 20 minutes. Okay, so we you finish this up, and then the last hour we're going to talk, we're going to do some calling, we're going to do some script practicing. Yeah, yeah. yeah and then we're going to do a job. Hello? <laughs> nope. I know everyone's going to leave. They just get off. Yeah. That's why we you know. Well, I'm going to say and make my calls. If you want to cheat yourself, cheat yourself. It's been a while since I've done this. Let's see. I want to make sure we can.
So who, who in here has an accountability partner? I really want to hear on here who has an accountability partner so far. No? No. I want to start practice partner. No. And we're really not open until people answer on. Well, I'm waiting for Ryan to jump in here to start practice them every day. I know he does. What about us? So he does have an accountability partner. His name's Eric Uckbar, and he's also a productivity coach yeah. as well. Yeah. Who else has an accountability partner in that group? Heidi, I know you do. It's loose, but you do. She's got several. Who else? That did you mean Alex? Yes. Yep. I was gonna say me too. Mm -hmm. Who am I? What do I know? <laughs> <laughs> Who else? Who on here is willing to commit to getting one? Jade, you have an accountability partner. Believe. Same to Eric Akbar as well. These things are important. Now, who in here has a script practice partner? Can we make the commitment today to sign to find a script accountability partner? Both. That should be on your calendar as well. And I'm just, I'm gonna, the bottom line here is this. Keep it simple, right? We're throwing so much information at you, especially the new people around here. Let's see, I don't know, I know Jade's been around a while, obviously Carol, Ryan, I can attest to this. It's like an information fire hose. All the stuff that's getting thrown at you. Our job as a company is to help you figure out what's important and what isn't. Don't try and figure it out for yourselves. It's all been done before. A millionaire real estate agent, coaching, all the stuff that we've been through. You have an entire company, which is very unique to the industry, that's willing to give you every piece of information that you can get. This isn't proprietary. If you go to other companies, you're gonna have agents that are unwilling to share with you because you're their competition. Even. That's not what we do here. So it's all been done before. Don't try to reinvent the wheel. Keep it simple. If we tell you, just like the, the study advice that I give to everybody that I talk to that's getting ready to take their real estate exam. We all know that they give you about 80%, oh, isn't that funny how that worked out? 80% more information than you actually need to pass the exam. You only need to focus on the 20%. Well, they give you the study guides, which teach you what the 20% is. So I want everybody in here to brain dump all of this other stuff. If it's not on, what's going on here? <laughs> Depending on, I'm looking at the people in the room here. I'm looking for those people that are trying to get to that point where Carol is, where Heidi is, where Ryan Luke is, doing business on a regular basis. They are in the business. But we need to be focusing on our growing our business. It's these four things in time block. Keep it simple. So how do I lead generate? Well, that's my priority number one, lead generate. What are the strategies for doing that? We have to work this backwards but keep it simple because it's, I remember, you know, you get all this information and it's like you're a deer in headlights. You know, I don't even know where to start. Because you're the accountant, you're the marketing manager, you're the salesperson. That's why, I'm, that's where Michael Boyd Industries came from. Michael Boyd Industries, Michael Boyd speaking. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, you need the accounting department. We told accounting, Michael Boyd speaking, <laughs> right? You're everything here. Where do I start? Why do most businesses fail? Why do all businesses fail other than fraud? We really want to strip this down. This is something that I heard of. I read a book a long time ago. Businesses fail because of lack of sales. That's it. 
get out there, lead generate for buyers, set that priority. So what are some of the strategies that we can do to fill that priority? We're doing our goal. 10 transactions, I'm gonna use yours because it's a great goal. I get nailed every single thing on there. And that's, I mean, goal setting is not the easiest thing to do. <clears throat> so our goal is to get those 10. Priority, we generate every day. What are the strategies that would help facilitate that goal? You're doing one of them, but people yell at you once. So what's that one? Calling who though? Okay, so sphere of influence. Yeah, sphere of influence, not Bob the taxi guy. Those are great. <laughs> what was it? Larry. Larry the taxi guy. So for everyone in the room, Jen's phone contacts, I thought she was, because everyone says, I don't have any phone contacts. And she says, no, they're really terrible. It says like, Jen bar girl, you know, like Larry the taxi. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I looked through like the first eight contacts were like Larry Taxi. So we know we're not calling Larry Taxi. Actually, I can call him. <laughs> I will call him. What's the most <laughs> Missouri? <laughs> so, sphere of influence. So you're focusing on that. That is going to be your 20% of something. Remember, your sphere includes your past clients. It's a slower burn, but you have to do it. It's the most painful one for a lot of people. So I do this question a lot too. New agents, the three big limiting beliefs and fears, calling people that you do know, calling people that you don't know, and the contracts and the actual transaction. What's the biggest fear? So calling people that you do know, raise your hand. Calling people that you don't know, that's so bad. What about, so I want to know people online that are newer or even when they were new, if you're or anybody wants to jump in. What was the biggest trick? Was, was calling people that you do know? Is that a big one for everybody? I said calling people I know. Calling people I know. How many people on here were calling people they don't know? Anybody? It's weird to me. Like some people will flip out about it. But to me, I'm like, oh, well, what's the worst I can do? They can hang up on me. You know, I'm never going to see them again. But just know that there's someone in this room that has the exact opposite. They go down and call someone that they don't know. And cold sweat, most uncomfortable thing they've ever done. What about the contracts? We talked about being in that position where we don't know enough. So we're going to learn everything that we need to know so that we can go do the job. Well, I won't call anyone and set any appointments until I know. I was terrified of the contracts. I mean, paralyzed by them. Now, remember, there was no productivity coach. I was here, Dixie was a help, but she was out on Pepper Pike. It was a very different, it was only 20 agents in the office. My first offer I wrote, I was in the office, which was on Detroit, the whole Saturday trying to write this offer. And just by sheer luck, CJ Tripsano walked in, Monica Woodman walked in, and someone else walked in. Three different people over eight hours helped me figure out what I was doing wrong. So you don't, I didn't have the luxury of me. So you're welcome. <laughs> JK, hashtag. Um, so that was debilitating for me. Okay, but back to our strategy. So we've got sphere of influence. Open houses are really tough right now. Ryan, what are you doing? I know. I can still call on expired in expired follow-up. What is the strategy for them to lead generate to build that business? Like you're, uh, I think you're trying to talk. Who? I don't know. Just type it, Ryan. We can't hear you. Yeah, it echoes, it echoes through. Oh, wait. No, wait. Let's see. No, I don't know how to do it. Because it's going through the TV. Well, let me see. Hold on. Have them talk again. Try again, Ryan. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Yeah. There we go. There I still call on expired. I still call on expired. The buyer's still top. Converting that were expired from a year and a half ago. Expired from a year and a half ago is what I thought. You were breaking up a little bit. Yeah. I still call on expired and I have a database filled up from expired from about a year and a half ago that I'm converting now. 
How many calls a day are you making? How many dials a day are you making? I, would, uh, I still utilize the dialer. I'd say close to 100 a day. Two hours a lead to follow up. Yeah, these are higher probability. Carol, do you mind sharing? You've been in the business for a while. I'd love for you to share with everybody what you do to feed priority number one, which is feeding the goal of doing transaction, 10 transactions and getting a mess by the end of the summer. If you don't want to, it's totally fine. She said, nope. Yeah, that's okay. Heidi. She said she talks to everybody in the chat. She talks to everybody. She's at that point in her career where she knows everybody. She's in the business. She's not a realtor they know. She's the realtor. And she's out there talking to everybody. Heidi, you're in your first year. You're about to finish up at the end of this month. What about you? What are you doing? Heidi, you're about to finish up. Got it. I use my sphere and circle prospecting. Sphere and circle prospecting. Those are really the high probabilities. What are some other things that you could be doing? Any other suggestions? People are doing anything to feed our goal of 10 transactions of Vespa by the end of the summer? For sale by owners. Ms. Bowes. Like it? So mail him following up. So it's a circle prospect. You're geo farming. Yes. Slower burn. You know how I feel about mailers. And them out. Don't mail them. Ooh, looks like we got another comment. Who's that? Uh, event, open houses, door Events. Heidi, I think, um, Heidi, I'm going to pick on you. And again, I'm picking on the people that I know. So sorry. But, uh, Heidi also teaches yoga. <clears throat> Heidi just did what she loves doing and got people to show up to her all levels yoga class. Right? Pick those things that you want to do. But again, Lead generation doesn't just have to be making phone calls, but it is the most important one. You have to do it. If you want to be event-based, we're going to talk about be event-based. If you want to be whatever it is you want to do, just do it and do it every day. For those of us that are dual career, do it on the days that you can. You've all made a plan of how you're going to transition into this business. And then we get here and we sit on our hands. Just do it. So I want to do a couple of ah ahas here, and then I'm going to open it up before we do um, call time. I want to open it up for questions from anybody that's new or whatever. You know, I always like to do this. Just we're going to talk specifically about our ah ahas from today, but I know, especially our newer agents, just have a question. We've all had them. We've all been there as new agents, so we're going to open that up for a little bit, and then we're going to talk specifically about the calls that we're about to make in this room. Aren't you glad you showed up in person? It's going to be great. It's going to be great. So who wants to share a couple of ahas? I just want to get a few. I won't go online first. Does anyone, anyone click it in here? Hey, good morning. Hey. Morning. So I want to, my aha is, you know, uh, I um, appreciate going back to basics, even though um, I've been a lot of years in the business. For me, it's just keeping what I need to do to the forefront so I can continue to be successful. I'm not where I think I should be, but I know that as long as I continue to do what I'm doing and stay on these classes and stay in the front of the business and not behind that it's going to continue to go up from here. This is very high. For those that don't know Carol, she's a very, very successful. I'm going to, I'm going to piggyback on top of that. When I was new, 
I spent the first two years, I took every class there was. I mean, we're talking, I, my brain was just, it was coming out of my ears. And then I went back and took the very first class with John Ludwig, who was our broker at the time. And it was the first day, the first class of Welcome to Real Estate. And he actually had a telephone. And he set it down. He goes, what is this? Remember telephones? What is this? It's an appointment center. That's all it is. And we talked about, so we were talking about all these methods and all this, this and geo farming and this and that, but just simplifying and getting back right to the basics, which says do open houses, pick up the phone. And I mean, it just clicked. I came back in from that and went, it just took everything I did, brought it right back into here, but I had that knowledge base. So more of it was like this. So I had that knowledge base to have some. It was still terrifying. It was like, you go away until you just keep doing it. So. Thanks, Carol. What are you two? Uh, uh, the big one for me is the time blocking. And making a commitment to it. I like putting it in my calendar, you know, in my computer on my phone. If I don't care if it's on a piece of paper, Danielle, who's our assistant team leader, she still does it like a 97-year-old woman and has a calendar book with sticky notes on it. Whatever works. I don't care what it is. If you're going to use it, do it. One more. Anyone? Anyone? Why yeah, first? All right. Well, before we get into scripting and role playing, great. Does anyone have any questions? And I know this wasn't the most, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Mind blowing topic, but I, I hope you take away from this how simple this business is. Do these things. Set a goal, time block to it, do the activities, measure it, adjust it, keep moving forward. Carol just said it. She's not where she wants to be. She gets back to the basics, sets a goal, looks at it, does it. But even outside of this stuff, is there any, any goal or any questions about the business? We can wait if everyone's gonna get off and it'll just be us then. Okay, well, so I'm, I'm guessing everyone's going to jump off of this call, but we're going to start breaking out and doing calls here. It's going to be great. Here's another thing. This is another takeaway for you. You know, to keep this thing simple, if you want to build a successful business, it's really, really, really simple. Well, what should I be doing? The 10 4 know what that is? And contacts added to command. This is a bank. M convo. 10 handwritten notes. And 10 previews a week. <laughs> So these are a day, this is a week. Keep it simple. That's what I want you guys to take away from this. This is what I want you to do. Keep it simple. If you do this every day, it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when will you succeed in this business. Who says Kaylee Zuhero? Do this, and that's what we're gonna do right now. So we're jumping into calls here. Um, to those that are going to stick around, let, Julia will let me know. And we'll break out and I can jump into a room with you guys. We're also going to be doing that with Julia for a half hour or so. We're going to do a little role playing. <laughs> 